Hi everybody, I'm Joey. Well, um, I'll be making this dining table and well, it looks like a pretty standard kind of boring-ish looking dining table. It's actually got some pretty complex elements involved with the sliding dovetails for the rails, uh, breadboard ends and uh, sliding dovetailed connections for the, the uh, rail to leg. So um, hopefully you enjoy and uh, see you later. Right, so I can start out by getting the leg stock milled down. And I just use the old nail trick to stop the two pieces sliding around when I laminate them. So hammer the nail in, cut off the top, smash the other piece on top, and that's it. And then they went off into my press. Now in the meantime, I could get working on the rails. As these are going to have a pretty big sliding dovetail all the way down them, um, I milled the stock up straight, left it for a day or two, um, and then resized it back down and straightened it again, um, just because it's pretty important that these pieces stay as straight as possible. So to make the sliding dovetail, I hogged out most of the waist just with a straight cutter, and then I can add the angled side just with a dovetail bit. And I could scribe the location of the, the other half of the dovetail. And do the same thing, but kind of opposite. I found the trick with this is to make a very tight joint and then just take a slight amount too much off. So you have a loose joint um, at the end but with the combined friction of the length of the piece, it actually ends up working really nicely. And with the legs out of the press, I could cut them down to rough size. And square up a couple of edges. And then take them down closer to the right size. So with them at the right size, I draw on the taper so I kind of can work out which corner is which while I'm working on the joinery, which is next. So I can start cutting out the kind of sliding dovetail that's going to connect into the leg. So I'll just do all this by hand. And then I add a little shoulder on the bottom of the rails. And that really is mainly so I, it's easier for me to um, put it in place while I'm marking it up. You can see here I can just rest the shoulder in the right place. And then I can scribe around the, the dovetail. Thank you. 
And I can get these fitting pretty good. Some were better than others. Uh, then I could make the, the short rails, and that was pretty simple, just a rebate to form a tenon on the back edge. And then on to cutting the tapers on the legs. Now, I always just make up a, a custom jig for every job. Uh, they're all different because the leg sizes are different, and it only takes you know, two minutes to screw some blocks of wood onto a piece of plywood. So. I needed to add some cross rails inside the frame of the table and this is mainly to hold the leaf when not in use but also does keep the, the two sliding components at the right distance apart so they just went in with dominoes and then I could put a heavy coat of wax on the sliding parts and that's all the finish that those parts got it just stayed waxed and then I could get on to the glue up. I'm using epoxy just because I like it. If you'll notice the spacings of those three rails are not even. Uh, I had a very clever reason for doing that. I, I just can't remember what that is. I was uh, super happy at how this movement worked. It's very easy to, to push in and out. Just a little noisy on my floor. So I had this big bright idea to use the biggest pieces of oak I could find for the top and it would be somehow less work. Yeah. Uh, so I managed to get them pretty flat so that wasn't too bad and straighten them off a bit. And then I would rip them in half and I'm just going to book match them, uh, which is a really nice plan. It just happens that the pieces of oak I bought are super boring. There's not much character at all in the grain, but anyway, I carried on. And I could work out an order of how I wanted the pieces to go and dress them down. Of course, these big wide panels didn't want to stay flat at all so I ended up having to work a lot with bent boards. In the meantime I was able to finish the table base and get back to jointing the, the wide boards which again was a bit of a trick because they were not sitting flat for me at all. 
Uh, and then I could work out where the cuts needed to be, which ended up not being great, having the small ripping that needed to come off and then go back onto the leaf. But actually looks quite nice finished. So at any stage I, I could from here on in I would do a little bit more flattening on the pieces as I needed. Uh, in this case this is to just flatten off the bottom a little better so I could add these thickenings around the edge. Okay, so in an effort to reduce weight mainly, uh, I didn't want to use 35mm thick tops. Um, mainly because my clients are smaller people and they're not going to want to have to drag around such a heavy table. Um, it also doesn't need to be full thickness. We've got about 23mm of solid oak. And so I've put these uh, thicknessing pieces around, mainly at, at the ends so I can form my breadboard ends. Um, but then on the end leaves, obviously, to show the thickness of the tabletop. Um, so you'll notice all the grain is going the same direction. So that's going to allow this thing still to move uh, and make the breadboards um, actually be able to work. So um, next is to square these up and flatten off the top uh, mostly. Uh, and then I'll start cutting the tenons for the breadboards. So this ended up being a pretty easy way I found to cut, cut these big tenons. So I'm using a, quite a big 35mm surfacing bit that you would use for flattening off whatever things. Uh, and I'm taking these tenons off in two passes. Well, one, one pass for depth and two passes for width. And it's leaving a surprisingly nice cut, no tear out, chip out on the, the nice edge. So I was really happy with it, and I, I did all uh, six tenons in about two hours. Uh, so once they were formed, obviously I could do the marking out and cut my shoulders and cut the, the waist away that I needed to. Some people are quite particular about how their tenons look. Uh, the jigsaw finish is absolutely fine for me. No one will ever see it. With the tenons ready, I could machine down my piece of cherry for the actual Greek water ends. making sure to mark the pieces well so I could put them back together in the right order so when the table's fully extended you have a continuous grain pattern along those breadboard ends and I could smooth off the, the good edge that's going to make the joint
And then came quite a lengthy period of a little bit of planing and fitting, and then a little bit more planing and then fitting, and that repeated itself for at least one day. That incessant hammering you can hear in the background is my assistant making the dowels for these uh, breadboards. But first I need to find out where to drill. So I put the breadboard end back on and use a brad point drill bit to mark the center. Uh, then I offset the hole in the tenon to help draw in the breadboard. Um, you can probably tell that I offset that way too much and ended up having to go back and trim that out a little bit. The end holes have slots to allow for the expansion, which is the whole reason we do these complicated things. And so glue only goes on the middle tenon breadboard end goes on and the pins dowels can go through and yeah doesn't fit <laughs> no way that's pulling in <laughs> right so after a little trimming I can re put the dowel in which worked fine put the dowels on the ends they're 99% dry just a little bit of glue around the very top just to hold it in place And so I could work out where the two main halves of the tabletop needed to sit and then make a much better joint. It ended up being a really nice joint between all three of the leaves actually. And then I could add some dominoes and they're really just to, to hold the middle section of the tabletop which is essentially unsupported. So I went all out and actually made cherry dominoes for the sides and oak dominoes for the middle and then I could just ease off the front edges of the dominoes um, to make getting getting it into the corresponding holes much easier with everything in place I could drill right through the, my rails and into the breadboard end now I'm being careful to drill where the tenons are not. So I'm drilling into solid cherry and not into my tenons, which will stop the table actually being able to expand. So I just had to countersink that a bit to let my screw length actually do what it needed to do. And so then I could do some final finessing of the top, or the joins on the top anyway.
and then I sand it for quite some time. With the bottom finished, I could do the final sanding on the tops with 400 grit. And then I could get the finish on, which I'm using Minwax uh, Fast Dry Polyurethane. And this is quickly becoming my, my favorite uh, finish. It's so easy to put on. Uh, it's just as easy as Danish oil, but it's much harder, yet it has a similar kind of oil look finish. So, very nice. The last thing to do was to add a couple of little stoppers just so the leaf kind of sits in one place when it's in storage. So they were just glued in and it kind of centers itself once you slide it in. Well, thanks for watching everyone. Oh, time to get this thing loaded up into the van and off to the new owner. See you later.